7th edition of BritishBoxing.net podcast. It's the 9th of October 2008 and there's another top-notch weekend of British boxing to look forward to. I'm Will Hale. We'll be doing our part here at the podcast. We'll be kicking off the show, reviewing a bit of last weekend's stuff. JJ Udajiri, brother of OJ Abraham's Watford legends, the pair of them. JJ, of course, reversed a defeat to Joey Vegas last weekend. We'll be speaking to him. They'll be telling us all about it. Then we'll move on to an interview with Johnny Eames. Aside from uh, telling us about the likes of Ashley Theopane, Ross Minter, a couple of other of his fighters, he'll be going into detail about the big one this weekend. Tony Oki, trying to rebound off that stoppage loss to Dean Francis, is taking on Nathan Cleverly. Johnny handles uh, Tony, and the pair of them will be speaking to us. And then we'll be speaking to Manchester legend and the subject of the the new film coming out, Gomez, as Mr. Michael Gomez. Who else can can make a a fight against journeyman Baz Carey into an event? We've got a 10 minute interview with uh, Michael. Man, can this guy talk, he's a a real crowd pleaser. I think he makes the promoters even more happy. What a fella. Let's get straight underway then with JJ Udajiri. Talking about the first time around against Joy Vegas. Uh, first lose. time. Um, he basically he he come in a stone overweight, so he never made the weight limit. Yeah. So the title wasn't on the line. Why did you um, go through with the fight then? If it was, he, he was a stone over. Basically, I sold nearly about three 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 hundred fifty tickets. I sold. They made us weigh in on the day of the fight. Yeah, because they said because he hasn't made the check weights, we we just you both weighing them on the day of the fight. Um, the title won't be on the line, but you've both got to agree to come inside 12 stone 12. We both agreed that, and he still didn't do that. He coming at about 13 stone six, and I coming at 12 stone 11. If you check the records, so that uh, yeah, so we turned up on the day of the fight. Two hours, because was, all my fans was on their way, and I, there was no opponent there, so I just went ahead with the fight. That's what happened, basically. Well, you know. That's a the fantastic thing to do. You didn't let your fans down uh, uh, on the first. Yeah, time. that's what it was. I didn't want to let the fans down. I shouldn't have. I should have never have took the fight. It was stupid of me, you know. You fought Tony Booth way above your weight as well, uh, JJ. Yeah, yeah, I fought Tony Booth. But the thing about it was, I boiled down to make the weight. You see what I'm saying? I when I fought Tony Booth, I was 13 stone six. So there's a big mm-hmm. difference. When I fought when when I fought um, this guy, I boiled down. 12 stone 11 to come inside the 12 stone 12 limit we, we both have to make a limit so that means obviously you're not carved you haven't carved up you haven't uh, had your fluids properly you know what i mean there's lots of things when you're making a weight division that you're supposed to do do you know what i mean which i never done so it was my own fault i shouldn't have boxed and you know and not only that i had a lot of stress at the time a lot of problems uh, you know things with, with the family with my brother oj i fell out of my brother oj there's a lot of things going on at the top. Yeah. I wasn't well, I was ill. Uh, there's loads of things going on, so no excuse for the fight that I did, you know? Well, and and you got it right the second time. Tell us about the fight. It was pretty close on the cards. Yeah, it was close, but um, I, I thought I was in control the whole time until they obviously caught me with a good shot in the 10th round. That was very awkward. I haven't boxed someone like that. Uh, JJ, you've... you've uh... Over over your time, you've always had it hard. You've been on the right side of the card a lot. Yeah, yeah. I've always, I've always, I've always had it hard. No one, um, you know, since I turned professional, um, I didn't start off good in, in the professional career. I was out messing around, getting into trouble with police and things like that. And yeah. and, I, and 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 I, I the heart And when I buckled down, I thought to myself, you know, this is it now. I want to be a champion. I don't want to be a journeyman like my brother OJ. He's, he's a journeyman, and I used to think to myself, I don't want to be a journeyman like him. That's how I used to look at it. I want to be a champion. And, you know, as an amateur, I won national titles. I've got, I've got the pedigree. I can box, uh, and I thought, why am I messing around with all these wrong people, getting myself into trouble, and, I, and I've, I've concentrated, and, 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 and it's paid off. Well done, JJ. Good win last Sunday in Watford. Come up the hard way, right side of the bill, as we said in the interview. Right then, let's move it on to Johnny Eames. 
Numero Uno down there in Canning Town, the TKO Ultra Ken Gym. Let's find out what he's got to say about uh, his main man, Tony Oki, the Portsmouth man himself. He's getting in there with Nathan Cleverly, 12 fights unbeaten. What's this young lad got to offer? Lovely. So how, how have you and Tony been preparing for the fight tomorrow then? Uh, nothing different than what you normally do. I mean, we, we was already in training with, for the uh, Courtney Fry fight. Um, we hadn't really stopped, started proper training. It was only going to be in two weeks' time anyway. So all we did was just uh, lift his train up a little bit harder than what he would have been doing. Do you think it's going to be a... Well, it's obviously a different fight. How's, uh, how does he feel about the change of opponent? Uh, you know, Tony's a proper professional. It don't really matter for him. If I said to him, "You're fighting King Kong," he'd fight King Kong. It don't really matter to him. You know what I mean? It's pretty inexperienced, uh, Nathan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Listen, Nathan's a great fighter. He's a, oh, I say a great fighter. He's a good fighter, um, and I'm sure that uh, it, uh, eventually he will be a very good fighter. But I just don't think I was surprised that Sports Network was going to put him with Dean Francis because I thought that would have been a career-ending fight for him um, because of Dean Francis' power. I think Tony will beat him comfortable because of his, his experience and, and how Tony works. But um, I was very, very surprised that he was willing to put a, a young 21-year-old prospect in with someone like, who punches like Dean Francis. That doesn't mean that so I'm saying Dean Francis is better than Tony. I'm saying that Tony, uh, Dean Francis is a lot harder than Tony. Right. And uh, on the subject of Dean Francis, you know, Tony's got a good record in rematches. He, he knocked out Hamer in a rematch. Would he fancy a rematch with Dean? We took this fight a lot less money than what we would normally fight for, for the opportunity to get back at Dean Francis. That's the only reason that we've taken this fight. I mean, the Commonwealth title, Tony, that, that it, it doesn't mean a lot to Tony. The, the, the reason why we've taken this fight is we've been promised a rematch with Dean Francis after this fight. He's still got the hunger then. Tony's a, Tony's a 33-year-old, 18-year-old. He's, he, he's <laughs> the, the most, he's the most dedicated professional boxer I've been involved with in, in my 10 years as, as a professional trainer. Um, he's an inspiration to all the young kids in the gym and in the two years I've been training Tony it's been a pleasure to train him um, Johnny do you mind if I ask you about um, Ashley are you still training Thea Payne mm, sort of I mean we were a little bit upset with Ashley in the fact that um, he went to America with an arm problem and we found out that he fought um, his last fight I can't remember even uh, was in the fair in the fight he fought uh, he, thought he fought Demarcus Corley Demarcus Corley and we were a little bit upset that we never knew nothing about it um, He's been back in the gym since for a week or so. I don't know. It's up to Ashley. I 